Hi all, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're joined by Renee Sass and we're going to be talking about motor control solutions. Hi guys, would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure, yeah. Hi all, my name is Markus Mura. I'm business development manager within the system and solutions team uh, here in Europe. Um, and I'm happy to be joined by Rob this day. Yeah, hi, I'm Robert Nolf and I'm as uh, Markus in the SST team and uh, my speciality is motor control the systems and solutions team what, what are you guys all about system and solutions team is simply the idea of uh, selling more than only one component per system so as you know renesas is historically coming from embedded processing so you know we are very strong in microcontrollers and microprocessors uh, but now due to different acquisitions for instance like interseal idt dialog or seleno in the past we are kind of a broadliner and that's why this requires a strategy to sell the complete portfolio. So the SST team's responsibility is really to strengthen, uh, let's call it thinking in solutions and promote system selling. And as mentioned before, this means simply selling more components per board. Okay. So when you're talking about system selling, I, I hear a lot of things about winning combinations and winning combos. Is that essentially what we're looking at here? Exactly. As, as mentioned before, the slogan should be think in the application. So this is a system approach. In the first step, a winning combo can be a system architecture or more, uh, let's say, more sophisticated block diagram. But depending on the success or the market interest, it can move further to, for instance, a paper design where we do schematics or we can uh, do a real proof of concept board or POC board. So even remote access to these boards is possible via our lab on the cloud initiative. This can also be very helpful. The ultimate goal of our proof of concept boards is, or also the winning combinations itself, is to support our customers so they can realize their application faster and with proven designs. Great, fantastic. So we are going to talk about motor control solutions. Could, could you just tell me a little bit more about what Rene Sass are offering for motor control solutions? Yeah, the motor control solutions are the ideal examples for uh, winning combinations because uh, the microcontroller alone cannot do the job. So we have a huge family and several families of uh, microcontrollers that can do uh, motor control, specifically the RX family with the T. So for example, RX 13T, 23T, 24T, up to the RX 7 uh, family. Then in the new family RA with the ARM controller, we have the RA 4, T1 and T2, and also RA 6, T1 and T2. Then in the very low end, we have the RL78 with specific timers for uh, motor control. And of course, also in the RZ, uh, we have the T versions, which are mandatory having the high resolution timers on board, either for one motor or for two motor or multiple motor controls, depending on the performance of the microcontroller. Next to the MCUs, we have, of course, then the bridge which is um, consisting out of uh, MOSFETs, but there has to be some glue logic between this. And these are the half bridge drivers, as we call them. We have them uh, to the highly integrated drivers uh, of the series, for example, RA227063, uh, where we only need an uh, MCU and everything else is being taken care of in the sense of um, hardware. Um, software you still have to, to do yourself. Um, and then we have also an intelligent driver combination where as a SIP, we have the integrated MCU and the driver in front and there's a DC-DC on board. So the whole thing works up to 48 volts, um, providing power to the microcontroller internally. So that's a SIP. That uh, device is called the RAJ306010. And then next to it, we also have the, uh, let's say, um, separate half bridge drivers uh, of the families uh, HIP 2210, 2211, 2204, 2203, and so on. So there's a huge pack of uh, half bridge drivers that go with high end MCUs, low end MCUs, and um, standalone. Right. Okay. And, and in terms of the, the topologies, what, what are we focusing on, on motor control? Is there, are there any specifics? Um, in principle, we are not limited to specific motor types. So we can control more or less all types of motors, even down to very small uh, RPM numbers. The limiting factors are mainly the voltage ratings, 
but also the capabilities of the control system itself. So mainly the microcontroller, so to speak, because in terms of software, timer resolution, ADC accuracy, etc. So the shortest answer, we are not limited on any topology for motor control applications. One of the areas that I'm really interested to understand more about is inductive position sensing. It's obviously a recognized area within Renaissance, but could you give me a little bit of the background and, and maybe your solutions to inductive position sensors? Um, yeah, Renaissance is having the uh, so-called IPS 2200 inductive position sensor for um, the rotating motors. And this gives a dramatic improvement over the accuracy that you can achieve with Hall effect sensors, which are down to one third of a rotation, or to resolvers, which can have, for example, 4048 uh, measurement points. But you, in both cases, you still need to know uh, where is your zero point. The inductive position sensor gives you an absolute feedback of your position in degrees mm -hmm. between 0 and 360 degrees, and this down to an accuracy of 0 0.5 degrees measured over the full rotation. So having this information and uh, resulting of that also the, the speed of rotating, your algorithm can uh, determine immediately um, how the uh, controls have to be to keep your motor running to improve, uh, increase or uh, decrease the uh, rotation speed. For example, uh, we see this coming to replace with the IPS 2200 uh, into uh, areas where typically a resolver has been used in the past. Um, the good thing is your inductive position sensor uh, gives the um, information back as a sine and a cosine, as you can see on the um, little video that I'm showing here. And um, this information is then taken by the microcontroller directly into its algorithm needed for the rotation of the motor. Okay, that, that's great. So essentially what you're, you're saying in terms of the in, in inductive position sense, and we are much more precise in, in that measurement as well. So one, one of the things I just want to pick up on again is um, picking a microcontroller. So if we were looking at parameters and the decisions that need to be taken into account, what, what advice would you give for that? I think you need to uh, go upside down. So first of all, you need to uh, think about what do you need to control the motor? So do you need a human uh, machine interface? Do you need touch control? Do you need buttons? Do you need additional sensors? For example, in air conditioning, do you need temperature, pressure, whatever you want to do? So what task uh, next to the motor control needs to be done. That is one part of the uh, decision making. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the number of uh, A to D converters uh, for your current and also position sensing. Then the PWM timers, FPU, memory footprint uh, that is needed depending on the algorithm. And then also if you uh, have sensor or sensorless operation of your uh, motor. And then last but not least is uh, do you want to run in uh, five volt or lower voltages? Five volt can be better in, uh, in the area of the noise immunity. So these kind of things mm -hmm. at the end decide uh, what kind of um, MCU you can be choosing. Okay. So just in terms of helping engineers, um, what, what is it that Rene Sass are offering in terms of reference designs, hardware, software, and, you know, getting things to market a, a little bit quicker? Well, we have the physical hardware. We have also the uh, software support. And also uh, we have the hardware, uh, software applications that we can take, go to a customer and implement it immediately there. The customer takes the schematics, which are available in different um, uh, CAD packages, and they can um, remodel the, the PCB and uh, come up to speed quite fast. So we have also an example here, the uh, EU68, which is on the, the picture now. Uh, this is a winning combo uh, proof of concept based on the RX13T MCU. It's using three times the um, HIP2210, which is the half reach drivers, and is also using the previously mentioned IPS2200. There's a little motor uh, added to it just to see that everything is working. And with that, you can go straight to a customer uh, and demonstrate it. And the customer can take this application immediately in uh, his, uh, his own environment. Fantastic. So in terms of select, selection hints and tips, what, what, what is it, we were, if we were covering MOSFET, for example, what selection hints can you give me for, for MOSFET? 
Um, yeah, for MOSFET selections, then uh, you first look at what uh, voltage you go. So looking at uh, the previous question you asked in regards to the microcontroller, um, you also will know what kind of motor you want to turn. And um, that motor, for example, if it's running at 24 volts, um, then you know already in what area you are working. So looking at the MOSFET 24 volt motor, if you uh, have the worst case scenario that the motor is stalling at full speed, you will have a uh, back EMF of 24 volts. So that means your MOSFETs will at least need to be uh, taken in 48 volts of the uh, system. Then um, as a rule of thumb, engineers tend to uh, be safe here and they take two times the VBUS for a minimum MOSFET rating. Then also you need to be thinking of your uh, current peaks. If you have a 100 watt motor, then uh, obviously you will need to um, have the capability of pushing the uh, current through the MOSFETs. So make sure that they also there are uh, far above the average current needed because during acceleration, deceleration and motor blocked or in a low jump will have a huge impact on the current going. So Marcus, today, obviously, we're talking a lot around uh, motor control solutions um, from Renesas, but what do you see as your highlights and, and what is it that we can expect in the future? Generally, I think Renesas is one of the few providers uh, which really offers a complete portfolio to realize motor control solutions or applications. As we touched before, starting at the powerful microcontrollers or even microprocessors and getting back to the, let's call it workhorses or power devices like the MOSFETs, uh, which Rob mentioned uh, even before, or IGBTs. Um, additionally, with the intelligent uh, three-phase driver, it's the RAA227063, this includes a lot of important peripherals for motor control applications. We enable a full-blown motor control, but even with a very low-end or entry-level microcontroller. One step ahead, the fully integrated solutions like the RHA306010, we also mentioned before, this part includes more or less everything, starting from the microcontroller engine down to the gate drivers. You simply need to put external MOSFETs, and this enables you uh, to scale your application in terms of power. So take a bigger MOSFETs and you can uh, get more power from the motor. You can also expect yeah. more focused solutions on motor control, meaning better integration, more performance, a broader portfolio on microcontrollers dedicated to motor control and all surrounding components from Renesas in the future. That's great. I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to join DesignSpark today and to tell us about your approach to motor control solutions and sharing some of your hints, your tips and, and products and also insight into the market. That's really great. So yeah, thanks for joining us and I hope we see you again real soon on DesignSpark. Thank, Thank you for your time. Bye -bye. Thank you for the time being here. Yeah.